Hey guys, what is up? John here from FlyMikeAlpha.com. Today we are talking aircraft performance and what you can do, what factors affect the overall performance of your aircraft. So everyone always talks about how much horsepower they have, what size engine they have, like that really is the defining characteristic of how your airplane is going to perform or their airplane is going to perform. Now, it really comes down to three things, right? You have horsepower, you have the weight of the aircraft, and you have what's actually driving you through the air, your propeller, all right? So the engine, the propeller, and the total weight that it has to accelerate through the air and lift through the air, that all combined together is going to give you your total performance. Now, high performance airplanes have big engines with lots of horsepower, big propellers, and a very low gross weight, a very lightweight airframe. So in our typical airplanes, say the Cessna 170, for example, that we've been flying around the country for a while, we wanted a little bit more performance. So we had a couple different options. We could upgrade the engine, but oftentimes adding more horsepower going to a bigger engine means more weight. Not always, but sometimes. Sometimes there's things you can just do to your current engine to make it produce more power, and it doesn't really necessarily add any weight, or maybe it lightens it up even. But more often than not, if you're gonna go from like an 0320, 150 horse, to an 0360, 180 horse, you're gonna be adding some weight to the aircraft, so there may or may not be a huge performance gain in that extra 30 horsepower. Now you can always make the airplane lighter, spend more money on more expensive parts, that way less, or you could pull things out of the airplane, but then you have less stuff in the airplane, you may not have a GPS, or you may not have that beloved ADF in there anymore. And then lastly, you have the propeller. So what we were running was a 76 inch Hartzell constant speed prop. Now, constant speed props typically give better overall performance than your fixed pitch propeller airplanes because a fixed pitch prop is gonna be good for takeoff and climb performance or good for going fast cruise performance. It can't do both. The constant speed can because it changes its pitch angle. Now, the constant speed also weighs more because there's more moving parts. So again, it's another trade off. You're adding weight to the airplane. A lot of stole airplanes out there you'll see in these short takeoff and landing competitions, they have fixed pitched propellers because they weigh less and they're just pitched way low, but they're not gonna be going very fast in flight. We wanna do it all, right? Uh, everyone wants to do it all. So what we decided to do was change our 76 inch Hartzell constant speed prop aluminum to a 83 inch Hartzell constant speed prop that's made out of carbon fiber or carbon trailblazer. Now, Propeller designs come along a little bit in the last few years. They've got these new fancy shapes out there and the downside from going to a 76 inch to an 83 inch, well, you'd think more weight, but actually not because it's carbon fiber, so that helps. They're both constant speed, but you are adding a much larger surface area, almost 20% more surface area on that big spinning disc. And so you're grabbing a lot more air. You should, with a bigger diameter propeller, be able to take off shorter, be able to climb faster, higher rate of climb, and you may be giving up some cruise speed. You may not be going through the air quite as fast because, well, there's more friction on that propeller blade. It's a larger blade, so you're gonna be losing a little bit of power in that sense. You should also be able to fly slower and possibly land shorter because you can fly slower power on hanging it on the prop because now you're supporting more weight. You should have a higher static thrust. There should be more thrust coming from that larger diameter propeller. But the trade-off is you're not gonna go quite as fast, maybe adding some weight. So in this case, going from the aluminum 76 inch to a carbon fiber 83 inch, we actually saved some weight. Plus we added all that extra surface area, so we had higher static thrust before we couldn't even get the tail up with the brakes on. You could go full power, full elevator forward, and you could not put this airplane up on its nose. Now with the new propeller, you actually can do that. And we knew we were gonna be gaining some takeoff performance, hopefully gaining some climb performance, gaining some slow flight performance, being able to fly slower, and possibly giving up some you know, actual cruise performance. Maybe we're gonna be cruising a little bit slower with that bigger prop. So before switching to the new propeller, of course, we had to get a baseline and test our old propeller so then we could know what kind of performance gains we were getting on the new propeller. Now, we tested a couple different ways. The takeoff performance, the takeoff distance and time to take off, the actual rate of climb, we tested the slow flight, how slow we could fly the airplane, full power on with full flaps before it would break and stall. And then we tested our fast flight or our cruise speed, our full wide open power setting. What could we get in actual uh, full uh, prop forward, you know, 2700 RPM and full manifold pressure at roughly a thousand foot density altitude or so. And well, here's the results. 
So how we chose to do these tests was to take the pilot out of it as much as possible. So although you could have gotten better performance by actually trying to raise the tail right away and then pulling some flaps to yank it off the ground, we were doing simply flaps 20, leaving the tail on the ground and letting the airplane just fly mains off first so that there wasn't any piloting technique in there that was going to change between all the takeoffs, trying to keep things as uniform as possible. We were careful to keep the conditions really the same between both days of testing, so 30 gallons of fuel, some junk in the trunk, two people on board the airplane, our weights really hadn't changed much, and the winds and temperatures were really the same, kind of calm to light headwinds, maybe you know no more than three to five knots on the nose uh, to calm winds kind of shifting, and you know temperatures right around 50 some degrees Fahrenheit and sea level. Nicely done. Woohoo! I feel like it goes faster. Yeah, it seems like we're getting off faster. The video will tell us for sure. System 705, runway 25, clear your touch and go, wind 280 at Niner. Uh, I'm actually going to do a full stop, camera on this one if that's okay, uh, 705. I guess it's okay, runway 25, clear to land for <laughs> what, did he, what did she say? 25, clear to land 705, thank you. Let's see what we get on this guy. Feel that acceleration! So on takeoff performance, clear winner, an extra seven inches of propeller, that 83 inch carbon trailblazer, plus, you know, more improved airfoil shape on those blades, most likely, it's a little bit more efficient. That really made a big difference here. And it could have made a much bigger difference had we actually taken full advantage of the propeller, actually started by pushing the elevator full forward, getting the tail up all the way, where the old propeller wasn't able to do that, and the new propeller is with that increased airflow. This is not in any way a stole takeoff. You know, we're not pulling in flaps, starting at zero flap, and then pulling in flaps to try to pop it off the ground we're not getting the tail up right away like we really should lowering the angle of attack lowering the induced drag on the wing as you accelerate and then rotating and pushing the tail down to the ground this is just trying to take all the pilot technique out of it to give you an apples to apples comparison it doesn't really let the carbon trailblazer fully shine in everything it's capable of but it's a pretty accurate comparison to say yes in fact a bigger diameter propeller with that more efficient airfoil shape is definitely going to be pushing a little bit more thrust on the lower end there, getting you off the ground a little sooner. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the slow flight test. Full power on slow flight and see what kind of indicated airspeed we can get this thing down to with our little 76 inch Hartzell aluminum prop. That's not dinked up at all. No, that's in amazing shape and would be a great addition to your aircraft for the low, low price of $7,000. <laughs> We're a helicopter. How low can you go? Yeah, we can't afford a helicopter, so we just went ahead and got a bigger propeller for the airplane so we could hang from it. <laughs> yeah, keep bringing that nose up and adding the power. Yeah, ride that buffet. Very nice job. Right around the low 30s. Can we break 30? Or are we going to be stuck there at 31, 32? Oh, it's so cool that we have the digital one. Uh, that's about all we can get out of it, eh? I think so. Cool, let's go ahead and just lower the nose and retract flaps, keep the power to full. Okay, let's go ahead and ease in full power and point that nose at the sky and see how slow this airplane will go before she stalls. So start raising your nose. Full power? Forward. Full power, yes. We're hanging the airplane on the prop. We're demonstrating how much more lift this prop gives us and seeing what we can get our indicated airspeed down to now with this new propeller. 37, 36, 35. Nice, 33, 32. Ooh, can we get under 30? Can we do it? I feel the buffet. Oh, there's 29, 28, 27. She's shaking, she's buffeting. All right, I'd say 29 or 30 is about as slow as we can go. Cool, very cool. 
Aaron 8. Northwestbound 800. So doing the test the way we did here, maybe not the most accurate way to do it. Uh, if you really want to know how much you could actually slow down, you would do a four-way ground speed test off GPS or a two-way ground speed test with a headwind and tailwind and cancel it out and figure that out. The trouble with doing it off indicated airspeed like we did is at such high angles of attack, your indicated airspeed due to the instrument error is pretty unreliable. But Either way, I think the point here is, yes, we can confidently say that with the bigger propeller, the new shape propeller, all that, you know, whether it's the different shape and blades or the bigger diameter propeller or both, really, that the airplane is capable of flying slower, three miles an hour slower, maybe, but it is capable of flying slower with a bigger propeller than it was with the older propeller. So I'll just try to do a steady state climb here for 90 miles per hour. And then lock in that pitch attitude that holds 90. Nice, so that's showing us about 700 feet a minute, would you say? Reliably? Don't let her speed up there. Cool, yeah, yeah about so 700. I count on about 700. Cool, that sounds good to me. I'd say 700 feet a minute. And that was at 53 degrees now up here. And uh, yeah, 299 or 6 on the altimeter. So we'll go from 500 up to 1,000, and we'll do it at 90 miles per hour indicated, full power, full prop, full uh, throttle, and we will uh, see what kind of rate of climb we get. Just really try to hold that steady 90 miles per hour for us. 90 miles per hour, okay. Yep. 90 cool. miles per hour in the climb. And full then, power, full prop. Yep. Okay. And whatever foot per minute rate we get, that'll be our comparison. Cool, we're getting about 1,000 feet a minute, I'd say. 900 to 1,000 feet a minute is pretty steady. Yeah. yeah, 800 to 900 feet a minute. I would say that's pretty, pretty much what we're getting there. So what were we getting degrees. before? Oh, about 700, so a little bit of improvement there. Oh, cool. Let's go ahead and reduce power here. I'm pretty confident to say that the bigger prop did increase the rate of climb here by how much? Oh, 100, 150 feet a minute, probably somewhere in that range. Uh, hard to do these tests and hold an accurate airspeed there and really get a good feel for how much you've increased your rate of climb, but at least 100 feet a minute for sure in this case. And the last test is how much should we sacrifice on the top end and our you know absolute top speed, prop full forward, full power. How much should we give up for that cruise flight and that fast flight of the top speed of the airplane by adding this bigger propeller? And just keep her right there at a thousand feet. Are don't we climb not supposed any. to do this for two long? It's okay. Yeah, you can do it for a few seconds. Just don't climb any. Okay. Keep her at one thousand one hundred. Six three Muldoon for two five. So zero six three, thanks. Runway two five. Clear to land. Wind two nine zero at seven. Zero six three. Clear to land. Two five. So max level flight one hundred and ten. One hundred and eleven. One twelve. 113, 114, 115. Don't descend there. 16. Yeah, I'd say, okay. 1100 feet, 115-ish. Or full power like that. Pretty good. And which one was the full speed thing? That's going to be prop and powerful forward, so you might want to flip the 180. We're just going to go as fast as we can to level flight. We're going to hold the airplane level and see how fast she goes. Okay. There's 114, 115, 116, 115. Cool, that seems like all we're getting, so let's go ahead and come off the power there and slow her down. All right, to sum it all up here, talking about the takeoffs, well, we can say with the 76-inch propeller, the older propeller, about a 333-foot average on the takeoff, 9.5 second average, versus with the 83-inch diameter propeller, the new uh, Hartzell Carbon Trailblazer 83-inch, about 297-foot average on the takeoff roll, and 8.8 .8 seconds average takeoff roll until the wheels were leaving the ground. Now, again, not the most efficient way to test the propeller. You probably could have squeezed more performance on the takeoff because you could actually get the tail up and decrease that angle of attack on the wing right from the get-go with that bigger diameter propeller where the 76 inch, you could go full power, full brakes, full elevator, full forward, and you still weren't gonna raise that tail until you got the airplane rolling, building some speed. So there's a little bit more drag on the airplane in that sense. So 
This is just an apples to apples comparison. It's not, you know, a max performance Valdi stole comparison of the two props, but definitely, you know, 30, 40 feet difference on the takeoff roll, you could confidently say. On the slow flight, 33 miles per hour indicator speed versus 30 miles per hour indicated airspeed. So three miles per hour less on the indicated airspeed. Again, super high angles of attack, not very accurate on the uh, airspeed indicator at those high angles of attack. Did it actually slow the airplane by three miles per hour? Maybe. If you really want to do this, you could do a four-way speed test and use your ground speed would be an accurate way to do it. But we can confidently say that yes, a bigger diameter propeller is blowing more air, has more static thrust, has a higher thrust for that given airspeed, and it's supporting the airplane a little bit more. The airplane is in fact flying slower and can probably land a little bit slower and thus land a little bit shorter with that bigger diameter propeller. So again, a win for the Hertzl Trailblazer. On the rate of climb test, 700 feet per minute with the 76 inch versus 850 feet per minute average or so for the 83 inch bigger diameter prop makes sense. We're going to climb a little bit faster. That's good. And then where we expected to see the bigger diameter prop kind of hurt the airplane a little bit was in the top speed test. They were both about 115 mile per hour indicated airspeed, all right? So indicated airspeeds, again, if you want to get really technical, you could try to do a four-way ground test on ground speed. But if you're seeing the same indicated airspeeds, then I'm pretty confident that it's really a draw in that sense, which is awesome because you're not giving up anything by having that bigger diameter propeller there. You're only gaining performance, losing some weight because it's carbon fiber. It's an awesome addition to the airplane. It's expensive. Um, so... But, you know, airplanes are expensive and it's a certified prop. So certified props going on certified airplanes costs a lot of money. Either way, pretty impressive to see the difference here. That is the one great way to pick up performance on your airplane. If you're already kind of maxed out on the horsepower and you don't want to be adding weight to the airplane, take a look at the propeller that you're running and maybe you can do some tweaking there, increase the diameter, change the pitch. A lot of people just repitch the props and twist them if they're fixed pitch, trying to make a climb or a cruise prop out of it. Consider maybe upgrading to a bigger diameter propeller if you have the ground clearance for it and uh, talk to your IA, talk to some other people with the same aircraft as you, talk to the guys up in Alaska that are really pushing the limits and doing awesome things with airplanes up there and they can give you some great guidance. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, of course, post them right up in the comments below and if you can't fly every day, Fly at MikeAlpha.com. We'll see you guys in the next video.